Hi, I'm Joel. I'm Sam. And I'm Chloe. And welcome to Learning, Learning from, from Scratch. Scratch. Hello, kids. Welcome back to Learning from Scratch. Um, this will be your third and final episode. And today we'll be learning how to complete a maze game. Um, if we draw your attention to the screen, uh, we have a template maze trial. Uh, so let's go inside and have a look. Ah, okay, we have our background as a maze. It's been pre-uploaded for you. Over here, you can see there are a number of mazes. We're going to use the simple one for now. Um, in our stage, we have a center. The center seems a little big for the maze currently, so let's size it down a little. You can use the sizing on the size in this panel. And okay, it's also, let's maybe make it start from outside. Okay. No, let's revise what we did the last time with Chloe, moving up and down. Hmm, looks good. Hmm. But is there a problem here? My center, I know center has reindeer, it has um, presents, but the center walk through walls? No! I don't think so. How do we solve this problem then? We can do this by introducing this code block called control and I think we touched a little bit on it um, the last lesson when we did a conditional for our end game state. Um, today we'll be using it again. So let's drag out this if code block. So how, how do um, code blocks work in general? So you know when your parents tell you <laughs> if you are good then I'll buy you ice cream or if you do your homework then we'll go cycling later. So the if conditional here works exactly the same way. It controls the flow of events. Now, okay, we have a code block if, but what do we do with it? We're going to have to use another um, code block from the sensing drawer and we're going to make use of touching colour. Can anyone guess um, why we're using this? If I give you a hint, our maze is made out of black lines. So, black lines. So, we're going to make use of that fact to train our centre not to walk past these black lines. So if I do an if, touching colour, hmm, okay, what do I do next? If, I'm if my centre is touching a colour, I don't want my centre to move further. So I will do that. In fact, I can just... Maybe I'll move this around. And I will come back here. So remember revision, our right arrow key pressed, touching colour. So if it's touching the colour, I want it to move backwards instead. So I'm going to copy this. Oops, I might have copied too much. And I will move this backwards, so negative. So let's try that. My centre... Hey, okay. This code block is running but my centre isn't moving because it's touching colour. So it moves backwards. Um, can you do that for all the rest of the code blocks? I'm going to do it here as well very quickly. Just remember to um, change your axis and some of the variables. Okay, I think we're about done. Maybe we clear out these blocks so that we keep our, our space tidy. Okay, let's try it out. If we move up, does our centre get blocked by a wall? Yes, it does. We move right, does it get blocked by a wall? Yes. Left. Okay, and down. Well, we're going to have to walk through this maze actually to have it um, ha try out the down arrow key. Or you can actually just move it on your, on your stage for the moment. Okay. Okay, so down arrow key, all the arrow keys work. Hmm, okay, what can we do next? Maybe let's just go ahead to play this game. Ah, but maybe when, when you play a maze, you might want to sort of track your position previously. So, let's move the centre back to its starting position. And we're going to introduce a new add-on. It's called the pen add-on. So if you go to this uh, bottom left-hand corner, this blue icon, and click on it, you will be able to see these extensions. Just click on the pen extension. You will see these uh, various code blocks, erase all, stamp, pen down, pen up. 
Okay, what do these do? We're going to find out in a moment. We are going to have to change the... We are going to have to use a more advanced code, uh, control block called the if-else. So if, if was just if this happens and then that happens, if-else is if this happens, this happens, but if it doesn't happen, something else happens. So for example, if your parents say, if you did well on your exam, we will buy ice cream, else you will get tuition. So this code block works in exactly the same way. So the reason why we have to use the if else here is because we have slightly more complicated logic. We previously, when we didn't define else, um, nothing happens when the else uh, else condition runs. Now we, we need center to do something. So we're just going to see that in a moment. If I drag my if code block here, I'm going to do the same thing as we did for the previous if. But in the else, i.e. when touching color is not true, we are going to have to do the same. Actually, I'm just going to copy this. It moves back, but now we want to redraw the line. So we are going to do a pen down. And then we are going to do the actual motion that was indicated. And then we are going to do a pen up. Oh, actually I also still need my next costume, so here. So let's take a look at what this does. If I move my right arrow, oh, okay, cool. The centre is pooping some lines now. So let's do that and replicate that for all the four code blocks, the, the three others for left, up and down. Taking care again of your axis and the direction of your axis. So I think I'm about done for the various four code blocks. Let's try moving the center from the start. So I, oh, my up block is a bit wonky. So we had a slight snafu with the up arrow just now. Uh, the reason is because I probably uh, messed up the coordinates and the direction of these movements when I was copying the code blocks. So if we go ahead and fix them, so if we go backwards, we want to do a negative here, a negative here, and we want to go forward eventually. So if we try that again... Oh, it's touching. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. Our, our centre moves up, down, left, right, and let's check out the left. Cool. And left. And leaves a trail of uh, blue fire dust in its wake. Alright, so now we've made a mess kind of on the stage. So let's try and uh, get that cleared. So I like to use events. And I want to get it cleared as and when I, I like. So I just use space. And we will just go ahead and erase all. So if I click on, the e on, on space, it will go ahead and erase all. Um, the reason why you see the backdrop changing is because on the backdrop itself, if you go into the code block here, uh, it changes to the next backdrop when the space is pressed. So uh, it's the same event key. So let's just uh, let's just go back to our original maze. We'll bring the center back here, and and actually we almost nearly have our maze game already. Uh, maybe a few finishing touches in terms of starting the game and ending the game. So when we start the game, we start the game with the green flag. So I'm going to add another event block here with the green flag click. And what do we want to do when we start the game? We want to bring center to the start of the maze. So if I take note of the X and Y coordinates here, and we go back to our motion drawer, we can go to a specific X and Y coordinate here. So, and it, it just helps you auto-populate wherever you are currently. So, that should work. So if I bring my centre out and I try clicking on this 
it should come back. Cool, awesome. Um, so that's for the start of the game. For the end game, what happens at the end game? The end game is when Santa actually meets the children. Okay, so um, in our template, we actually had some template code for the children. So let's go in and take a look at that. Uh, here, the children also respond to the green flag click. Uh, there's a go back layer because later when you see, you don't want Santa to get hidden by the children. So the Santa goes above instead. So we, we bring the children to the back layer. Kind of like, you know, um, if you have onions and layers and you want to interchange them. Um, and then we again use the forever block. I think you were familiar with this from our last lesson. And if it's touching Santa, we play something. So let's give it a try. I'm just going to play cheat, bringing the Santa up here. And it should play some sound. There we go. So we have our end game. So let's go ahead and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Our center is running through the maze. Just gonna on the volume here. Ready? Give, give. Yay. Okay. Let's let's stop this program. Um, so you might you might ask, okay, so then what's next? Uh, we've already completed this maze, so we can't keep playing the same maze over and over again. So that's where our backdrop comes in. So if you click on your backdrop and you go into the code block inside the backdrop, uh, you can see when flag is clicked, you do a next backdrop. So it's again like a costume change, but for backdrops. So if I'm going to click the flag, can you see that the, back, the backdrops are changed? We have a new maze. And you can do this for as many mazes as you like. So you can upload um, various mazes up here using this upload button. And you can go to somewhere like Maze Generator to generate mazes of varying difficulty, some starting from simple to hard. Uh, last thing I think we need to do is, do you see that this blue line here isn't cleared? So that's because our erase all currently is only on the spacebar. But we'll need the erase all on our green flag arrow as, uh, green flag event as well. So let's just go ahead to add this here. And well, yeah, and I think we're about done. So there you go. Um, just take care that your center might have to be resized if you use different size mazes. Now that you have a playable game, I'm sure you want to share it with your friends. How do you go about doing that? First, you have to log in um, over here. Uh, just create an account and sign in. And then you will see this orange button, Share. So go ahead and click that Share button. And what's the point of sharing if you don't get some feedback? Your friends are sure to have tons of feedback for you on how to improve the game. And we've only just touched the tip of the iceberg of what a Scratch game can do. There's variables, there's other controls that you can use. It's a whole amazing, wonderful world of Scratch out there. And we invite you to continue your journey with the links below. And with that, we hope you had fun!